All right, I wanted to kind of give you a, since we're talking about SQLite, a little bit of an overview of some of the things in SQLite so that they're familiar to you. Um, I'm actually connected to PSQL at the command line here, so I can do things on both sides and I will compare them. Um, I'm pretty certain I have a table called Bob, but let's do this. Minus D Bob. Uh, it has NNN as an integer. Let's drop Bob. Uh, it's just an arbitrary table that I'm going to create here. And let's uh, do the same thing over here. Okay, so the commands that you've learned for Postgres work pretty well in other databases. Uh, over here we have PSQL with an example DB. So let's create table Bob with N as an integer. Um, if I can spell create. And let's insert some data into it. Into Bob. And values one. And we'll do two. Boy, that's inventive data right there. And we'll do the same thing in Postgres. It really works the same. Uh, if I can type create right the first time. So that we have the same values in both cases. Um, you'll notice that when I do a describe of a table in Postgres, okay, I do backslash D and then the table name. And if I do a describe of it in uh, SQLite, it's dot table uh, Bob, which just says that I have a table named Bob. If I want to actually describe it, I have to do a little bit more over there. I'm going to have to actually tell it which way I want it to do it, which will be dot header on, if I type header right, dot mode column and pragma uh, table info. There is a built-in thing that we can call called table info and we'll cast it the name of the table. And we see a similar sort of thing um, in SQLite. And um, you know you can you can put your interpretation on what the columns is or whether you like the formatting or not. The thing that I'd like to point out about it is that although the syntax for some of this stuff is a little bit different, the syntax for SQL is pretty darn close to being exactly the same. Uh, there are subtle differences that will make you annoyed. For instance, um, over here I can do insert. I can insert values that don't have anything and leave nulls and an entire row in Postgres. I cannot do that in SQLite. It will not insert an empty row. Um, the handling of null is subtly different because the SQL standard for standardized query language is not specific quite about how you handle nulls. So there are some subtle differences. But by and large, anything that you can do in Postgres, you can do in SQLite. It's not as fast as you might imagine, since SQLite is really designed for having a single file as your database. I would not try to load a SQLite database with 57 terabytes of data. I think that that would be a mistake to have a file that large. It will probably handle it, but slowly. And it is not set up as a network database as much as it is set up as a database that you compile right into your code, which is the reason why I want to compare it to um, the database inside uh, a bunch of these cryptocurrencies. Level DB is one of them in Bitcoin. And take a look at if they're really getting something. Now, with Level DB, you have a database that the only way you get access to it is if you write a program in some language like Go or C that accesses the hash store. You don't have the ability to create indexes. Okay, everything has to be addressed by the hash value. So it's much more limiting in terms of what it can do. 
but does that get you any performance benefit? And certainly it makes it more difficult to develop when you can't go in an interpreter like SQL Lite and say, oh, select this out and let me take a look at it. Okay, I haven't built some sort of fancy graph. I have gone through and done some timing tests and take a look at the three databases and compare them. With just 10 rows, you'll notice that they were pretty fast and pretty comparable in speed. Postgres was actually slower. And I built these rows so that they're representative of what you would see in um, a transaction in Bitcoin. So the size of the rows is pretty large individually. But uh, yeah, with 10 of them, they're pretty comparable. When I get to 100, I start seeing that uh, equal light is actually performing the best out of that set. And the reason for this is both SQLite and Postgres. SQLite runs multiple threads internally. Uh, Postgres, you're actually looking at multiple processes. So as the amount of usage goes up, what we see is at 10,000 rows, that Postgres is still a little bit slower than SQLite, which surprised me. But they're both faster than LevelDB because LevelDB basically is taking the data and immediately writing it to disk instead of processing it, caching it, uh, understanding the relationship between the size of the data and how you optimize that for the size of the disk blocks, grouping things together. And both of those databases have stuff internally that allows you to group things together so that uh, when they write, it's taking advantage, if you're on a spinning platter, of the position of the write head. So you actually get better performance out of writing stuff in SQL Lite on an average case like this than you do just directly writing it to a file in the database. So performance-wise, what I see is that if I had to make the choice between something like Level DB and SQL Lite, where you're using a hash as an index, I'd probably go with the SQL Lite if I wanted a compile in database. Certainly, all the browsers today have SQL Lite built right into the browser. That's how they keep track of things like bookmarks and history and a whole bunch of stuff. And that interface is actually available, although it's not standardized, through JavaScript. And you can build applications. Gmail uses it. So, you know, there are major applications that are built using this database to do stuff on the client side. And they work really well. So I would say that although there are some differences and some disadvantages to things like SQLite, um, it certainly wouldn't be something that I would... I, I would choose it over a other databases, okay? And from what I've seen also when you start looking at something like Postgres versus MongoDB, Postgres is faster, and it has a lot of other capabilities. So these databases that have been around for decades and decades uh, that are heavily tested, heavily optimized, they've improved. They've gotten better than what you would expect, and they also offer you a standard query language.